Winter has come to the Russia-Ukraine war, and that's largely frozen both armies in place. No one wants to fight in the middle of a brutal European winter, and that includes the Russians. So for right now, both armies are relegated to fighting over small eastern settlements and cities. But spring is coming, and with it might come a renewed war. Could this spring be decisive to who wins the Russia-Ukraine war? It certainly could for Russia, as Putin seems determined to press on with the war no matter how many lives it costs, or how much of Russia's military infrastructure has to be sacrificed. After his first mobilization fell flat and led to increased tensions in Russia, he's reportedly planning a second, bigger offensive as soon as the weather warms up. Unsurprisingly, Russia isn't sharing its military plans. So most reports of this come from Ukrainian intelligence, and main intelligence directorate representatives Vadim Skibitsky reported that Russian troops are massing in the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts. But could something bigger be coming? A large attack on the east could reclaim the territory Ukraine took back in recent months, but that would put Russia largely back in the place it was a few months into the war, and far from Putin's initial goals. Taking roughly 25% of Ukraine's territory would be a devastating blow to Ukraine, but it would also be an embarrassment to Putin. While his initial comments about the war made boasts about denazifying the country, his future comments made it clear that this was more about reclaiming the land lost when the Soviet Union collapsed. But as much as he wants it, Putin's options are limited. A massive mobilization would require a heavy draft and could put Putin at further risk of a coup from within. Stepping up bombing of Ukraine would likely push NATO to provide even more anti-missile technology, and directly confronting NATO seems to be one step Putin isn't willing to take. That leaves one option – try to reopen another front. While the Russian forces make inroads into Ukraine from the east, Putin could convince Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko to either send troops from Belarus into Ukraine or to open the border for Russian troops to invade and charge toward nearby Kyiv. But this might be easier said than done. Lukashenko is considered one of Europe's last dictators and heavily relies on Putin to prop up his regime. But his country's military isn't huge, and his country has been rocked by protests against his rule in recent years. So, while he's said all the right things about Putin's war, he's been hesitant to get directly involved especially once it started looking like Russia was losing. That's Russia's biggest problem. It has very little in the way of outside support. Even China has backed away from Putin in recent months, leaving Russia relying heavily on Iran for weapon shipments. So it's unlikely that Putin could win the war decisively in spring, simply because he has so few options for victory. Even so, it's almost guaranteed that he will step up the offensive and cause a lot of pain. But the question is, can Ukraine win? At the start of the war, no one thought it was possible. Even from media outlets aligned with Ukraine, there was a sense of fatalism where most people throughout the country would be overrun in weeks and that Zelensky and other leaders could consider fleeing and fighting the Russian occupation in exile. After all, it was a nuclear-armed great power against a relatively new independent country with a chaotic political landscape. Then the Ukrainian defenders fought relentlessly, aid from the world started pouring in, and the momentum shifted dramatically. And Zelensky has not been shy about asking the world to do more. In recent months, Ukraine has received many important weapon shipments. This included the Patriot missile air defense batteries, which were a long-sought prize. A complicated series of negotiations over tanks led to eventual promises of both German Leopard tanks and the newfangled American Abrams tanks. This keeps Ukraine stocked with modern weapons, while Russia is stuck with Cold War-era arsenals that Ukraine keeps whittling down with effective attacks. But Ukraine's biggest weapon might be intelligence. With Russia's limited paths to victory, Ukraine can anticipate an upcoming offensive, but they can't exactly prevent it. Russia still controls wide swaths of territory in eastern Ukraine, and they can funnel their soldiers there for an eventual surge. But that means that Ukraine largely knows where the attacks are likely to come from, and they can war game how to respond. So for the most part, this winter period is the world's highest stakes game of chess. Both sides are trying to outthink the other, but Ukraine has far more ways to get the drop on Russia. Given the current situation, this could be Russia's last chance to make a big move. Putin might be determined to fight to the last man, but that last man will come down the pipe sooner or later. The last mobilization effort was filled with problems. A large number of the draftees came from ethnic minority groups, which have a complicated relationship with Russian rule. And many might be less willing to serve as cannon fodder. The Russians who were drafted often came from professional backgrounds and were thrown into combat with little preparation, which led to a large number of casualties. If this pattern repeats itself in the spring, Putin will not only face a troop shortage, he'll face enormous backlash from his own people and even his military. So how can Ukraine turn the invasion into a disaster for Putin? Ukraine's hesitant to attack before they're ready for an extensive battle, so the relative pause until spring works in their favor. A lot more weaponry from the US and other allies will be coming soon, and that's not the only way they can tilt the odds in their favor. With only a few paths into Kyiv-controlled Ukraine, the Ukrainians are fortifying the area heavily. 
installing checkpoints, guard towers, and troop outposts. It's not just in the east. While an invasion from Belarus might be less likely, Ukraine is taking no chances. The path from Belarus to Kyiv is a swampy forest region, and it's been heavily dotted with landmines. So no matter where Russia makes their next move, odds are they'll face a heavily fortified Ukrainian line. But other areas of the war will provide a greater challenge. While Putin's been unable to take over the territory he wanted, he's shown he's willing to cause as much damage as he has to in order to break Ukraine's spirit. The war has been characterized by heavy bombing of civilian areas, targeting apartment buildings, schools, and even a maternity hospital in the early days of the war. That's been the one area of the war that hasn't changed during the winter. And that means the most important part of what happens in the spring might be negotiations. No, not negotiations between Ukraine and Russia, there's no common ground to negotiate over, but between Ukraine and its allies. Ukraine has big requests for gear to help it defend itself, but NATO has had some lines it wouldn't cross so far. Most significantly, they're not willing to provide offensive weapons that Ukraine could use to effectively hit over the border into Russia. Ukraine has successfully hit several arms depots and troop barracks in Russian territory, but it doesn't have the ability to target major Russian cities. But could this be changing? Certain weapons like long-range missiles and fighter jets are likely to stay off-limits, although initial analysts would have said the same about Patriot missiles and tanks. NATO remains hesitant to do anything that Putin could claim was a direct NATO attack on Russia, but most analysts believe his nuclear threats can't be taken seriously anymore. So while it's unlikely NATO will encourage Ukraine to take the war directly to Russia, they could be willing to help it expand the war in some other key ways. But the current targets in the East might just be a distraction. Currently, most of the fighting takes place in bombed-out settlements like Solidar and Bakhmut, which are for key resources. But in terms of controlling the battlefield, the most significant arena may be in Ukraine's south, the area bordering the Black Sea. Russia tried to corner this key water route early in the war, so it could disrupt international commerce, and the area is still heavily disputed. If Ukraine's able to knock out more of Putin's Black Sea fleet, it could turn the tide of the war because Russia is losing ships fast, and it may be unable to contest the area for long and that opens up a new front. What would it actually take for Ukraine to win the war? Unlike Russia, it doesn't have ambitions of conquering the enemy, but Zelensky has been firm that Ukraine will not negotiate until Ukraine controls all Ukrainian land. That includes all the regions occupied since 2022, but it also includes the Crimean Peninsula, a peninsula with a large minority of self-identifying Russians. While being a part of Ukraine was controversial for Crimeans back then, the occupation of the peninsula since 2014 by Russia has undoubtedly turned many residents into patriotic Ukrainians, and Zelensky is determined to bring the region back into the fold. And it's much more than a matter of pride. Crimea is a key strategic location, as it holds a major land bridge that is Russia's primary way of resupplying its troops in southern Ukraine. If the peninsula falls, and the land bridge with it, Ukraine will control all major access points to the country. Ukraine successfully targeted the bridge earlier in the war, causing major disruptions for Russia, but it was successfully repaired. If Ukraine takes over the area and sends Russia back to its 2013 borders, Zelensky would be as close to an unqualified victory as they could get. But that would leave Putin very few options. For Putin, reclaiming Soviet territory is a matter of pride, but at this point, he would have very little in the way of supplies and very few days to attack Ukraine. He could try to escalate with weapons of mass destruction, but the odds are his own military leadership would deem that to be unacceptable risk due to the possibility of Russia being targeted by NATO in response. The problem for Ukraine is that Russia can't be defeated directly or forced to surrender because they can continue to hit Ukraine from safely within their borders. So the war will likely end only when the Russian leadership comes to the negotiation table. But for all practical purposes, it could end in months. If Ukraine is able to successfully repel the coming Russian offensive and take advantage of the gap to reclaim old territory, it would make Putin look like a weak leader, and that would likely give his few remaining allies doubts about investing in the war any further. If Crimea falls, it's almost certain he'd be deposed as it removes one of the only big inroads into Ukraine. His only option would be to continue bombarding Ukraine until he ran out of ammo, while NATO continues to supply Ukraine with anti-missile technology. But once Ukraine has the advantage after this latest offensive, it's probably not giving it back. Which means that spring could be Putin's last stand. Want to know more about how things are unfolding in Ukraine? Check out how Ukraine snipers take out vehicles from 2,500 feet, or watch this video instead.